Hello, I'm David Ward. I'd like to welcome you to another uh, another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do some some creeping vines or um, uh, ivy types of things without using um, an external plugin. Uh, you can see it right here. I've got some ivy on top of a column, like a Greek column. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, first things first. Let's get rid of our default cube. Just hit delete on your keyboard there. Spacebar. Add a new mesh cylinder. And we got default is 32 vertices. I've gone ahead and changed it to 16. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And let's drag this up above the grid here. Kind of use that grid as a floor type of thing. Okay, tab into edit mode. Let's grab these guys on the top and scoot them up some. Oops, there we go. Make sure you grab that arrow. Okay, that'll be good. Most columns are a lot taller, but. Uh, this is just for example purposes. Go ahead and grab all these and you know what? I'll subdivide them after a while. I'd like to do some things first. Uh, go on to the top view, uh, uh, 7 on your numpad. And I'm going to delete half, three quarters of this, like so. Just delete these vertices. You can see one quarter of it is left. And what I'm going to do now is go, go to my, uh, my editing buttons add a modifier and it's going to be a mirror modifier and it automatically mirrors on the x-axis as you can see but we'd also like to mirror it on the y-axis so there we go so anything we do on here is going to get mirrored all the way around so nice handy little modifier okay um, now what I want to do is put the little ridges in here like you you've seen on columns Greek columns Roman columns, those types of things. And the way I'm going to do that is let's go back to the top view and I'm going to grab the face select tool right there and I'm going to grab each one of these edges here and I'm going to go down here and change this to individual centers, the pivot. So now if we were to rotate it, it would rotate along each one's center. Uh, anyways, okay, so now if we extrude hit E on your keyboard, go individual faces and let's scale it down actually let's hit Alt S, to scale it inwards a little bit okay you kinda see how that's working let's go ahead and set smooth and add a subsurf modifier and we need to add some extra uh, extra loops around the top and bottom so um, so so it, we don't have this this weirdness going on up here the way you do that is control R actually this we in, yeah tab in edit mode okay deselect everything control R will bring up a ring a little pink line there just click and you can drag it all the way up like so not all the way up just enough to give that a nice straight edge and let's add another one down here Control R and then just drag it. Okay, and you know what? Let's go ahead and just add a couple here in the middle, just so we can say we did. You can zoom in a little bit. You can see how that's working? A little sharp on the edges here, so let's go ahead and fix that. Go to edit mode, and let's go into top view, and let's select all these guys. Well, just those guys. I was going to select all of them, but I'll just select these guys. And now let's deselect this guy here on the top and rotate this around. What is this guy? Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Select these. Uh, actually, we don't want those. We just want these. Huh. There we go. I was trying to deselect those and end up selecting them. Um, okay. Now let's go back into top view and grab this guy right here scale manipulator mode and right here where it says global change that to normal and we're gonna grab this red one here and we're gonna scale it like so if you can see that making it a little a little skinnier so like so and we're gonna do that on these guys also now what normal is is it 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 scales it along the the direction that the face is is facing the normal direction that it's that it's facing. So you can see here this face is facing the direction the blue line is pointing. 
And if you select this one, same thing. Same thing. So normal, the global, which was nor, uh, automatically set, it, it only has the global axis, like uh, the red is the horizontal, uh, the green is the to and fro, and the, and the blue is the vertical. But uh, turn it to normal, and you can just scale it according to its... its so you can also go local, but that doesn't quite work the way that you might want. So normal is actually the, the best way to go on this one. Okay, all that said, let's go ahead and do the same thing on these guys. Scale them down some. Okay, and keep going. There, scale it down. And last but not least, scale it down. Okay, now just tab out of edit mode, and there you go. Some nice little ridges there on your column. Now, I know what you're thinking. Columns have a base and a top. Well, maybe you're not thinking that, but you are now, huh? So uh, let's go ahead and give it one. Let's go just change this back to medium point. Change this back to translate manipulator mode. So edit, go tap into edit mode, select everything, and just, eh, you know what? Let's not worry about this. Just move it up one grid square. And let's go ahead and make it even. Let's go ahead and move this top down. Change this back to global. Change this down, or move this down to that grid square right there. Normally I don't really bother with the grid squares, but why not? So let's give this guy a base. Let's go into top view and add a cube. Go back to front view, hit one on your keypad or your numpad. Um, tap in edit mode. Let's scale this on the Z axis, make it a little shorter. And let's move it up. And let's scale it a little bigger. And let's move it up some more. Scale down just to get it nice and even on here. Okay, looking good. But if we add the subsurf to this guy too, it's going to really look weird. Add set smooth. So, what we need to do is W subdivide multiple. We don't need five. Let's just do, let's do three. That should be fun. And it gives it a nice, more of a square shape. It's still not quite a square as I would like. So, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, hold down Alt and right click on these guys and let's go ahead and do it on this guy. Uh, you gotta hold down Shift if you want to do it twice. And let's scale it on the x-axis and move those guys out towards the sides. And You can see the edge is getting a lot sharper. So that's how you square that off nicely. Let's do the same thing on this. Scale it on the y-axis this time. Okay, there we go and go ahead and do it vertically as well. Scale it there, grab, uh, shift, alt shift, select that, and that, scale it on the Z axis. So there we go, got a nice sharp edge, smooth box there. So there's all kinds of, there's three different main columns if you paid attention in your uh, history class. There's the ionic columns, which is what I'm going to make here. Um, the Doric columns and the Corinthian. Corinthian is nice and fancy. Doric is pretty fancy. Ionic is kind of just plain Jane, so that's what I'm going to do. So plain Jane, one don't want to get into too much detail. What I just did was Shift D uh, on that cube that I created for the base and just dragging it up on the Z axis. So now I have a top and bottom. I always remembered Ionic because it kind of looks like a capital I. <laughs> Anyways. So let's merge all these guys together. Let's go ahead and apply these, the uh, mirror modifier to the column itself. And grab grab the, 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 the header. I don't know what you call that. The, the top. I'll just call it the top. Um, and then shift select the column itself. And then shift select the base. And hit control J. And it asks you if you want to join selected meshes. You go OK. So now you got a nice single mesh column and now we're halfway done <laughs> well not even halfway anyways let's go ahead and add a nice marble texture to this guy go over to your shading tab and the material buttons add a new object let's call it marble and let's go to the texture buttons add a new one 
go ahead and name this marble texture. And under texture type, we're going to select marble. We don't want these colors though, because that doesn't look like real good marble, at least not the same style of marble that the columns are usually made out of. So let's go to color band and uh, turn the alpha. You got normally you're selected, or de by default, you're selected right here. It's black, but it's 100% transparent. So let's move all the way up. So now we got black and sort of a um, an aquamarine color. So let's change this aquamarine color to a really light shade of blue, about right there. That'd be good. And let's change the black to white. So we've got a, a little bit better of a marble color. The blue is still a little too dark. We'll just make that kind of a grayish blue. Let's even go even lighter. It's real subtle, maybe even more so. There we go, that'll work. Let's go back here, kind of see the marble look about it. The colors, the, the excuse me, the sheen is not really what I want. So I'm going to change this to blend, and I'm going to make it a lot harder. And the specular level, and let's make it lower. This is old column, we didn't be too shiny. Okay, and I like to select the monkey head to kind of get an idea of what it what it's going to look like. You can scan through all of these different shapes to see how your your material is going to might look on your on your shape on your model. So, anyways, maybe not quite so hard there. Okay, that's probably good. Nice dull shine, which is what I want. And uh, another thing you can do for marble is go to your subsurface scattering shader there. Go ahead and turn that on. And go to your where it says custom. Click on that. It'll bring up a, a pop-up there. You can select marble there. Go ahead and select the monkey there. And it kind of gives it a nice gleam. More more like realistic marble. So let's. I want to see what this looks like in the renderer. So let's set our, our lighting and, and things like that up. A camera. Uh, go to top view. Add a new empty. Grab the camera. Shift to select that new empty. Control T. Track to constraint. So now you can control the camera where it's pointing and things like that. A lot easier. And let's do the same thing with this light. Let's go ahead and create a empty right here. Grab the light, shift select the empty, control T, track to the constraint. Grab the light and let's change it to a spotlight. And I want to change it to buffered shadows. And the only thing I want to change in the buffered shadows is the bias. And it's 1.0 by default, but that's way too much to get real good looking shadows. So let's put it 0. 0. Zero 01 is so the lowest you can go. I guess we can go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and arrange it. Grab that empty and put it up there and grab the light itself. Move it up into place. You can kind of see if it's going to cover the whole model or not by kind of getting alongside the light. And you can see where it cuts off. So you can see it. it's going to cut off right there on the bottom. So let's make the distance a little further and the clip a little further too. So there we go. And let's go ahead and kind of arrange this where it's more pointing directly from the front. I'm going to go over here, grab 3D view, and pop to my camera view here. So as I'm moving the camera over here, it'll update over here so I can kind of see what I'm doing without having to pop back and forth. OK. OK, that's, that's about the right angle that I want. So if I render now, F12, just going to render that out. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's kind of dark. So let's see what we can do to fix that. Light. 1.0. That's pretty good. Um, let's add another light on the other side. Just shift selected each of those. Uh, shift D to duplicate. Just move it over and grab the light. Move it over. I don't want it to be a full 1.0 because I want my main light to be this guy right here. So I'm just going to make this one. Let's make it 0.65, 65%. Okay. And now let's see what it looks like when we render. Not too bad. Still kind of dark. Let's see what we can do to fix that. Grab this. That's nice and bright. Um, Maybe it's the light settings. Let's see here. Buffer 
Sacred Shadows, and Burst Linear, that's what we want. Perhaps it's the the subsurface scattering that's on there. Hmm. Shouldn't be that dark, I wonder why. Let's try turning on ambient occlusion. Make that approximate. And the default settings should be fine. Let's go ahead and render again. That's looking a little better. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so that's basically what our column looks like. Got the nice marble look to it, nice shine and everything. So, okay, so though our column is done. Well, let's go ahead and save this guy. Save as. Let's go ahead and make a new folder for it. Let's call it uh, IV. Make directory, yes. And just name it column. And save as.